So after this excellent session of free paper, we'll be moving. We'll moving the next session. Uh, it is regarding a shoulder girdle injuries. How to prevent the failures? Uh, I I invite my co convener I'm Dr. Pankaj Pawar, convener of the session. I invite my co convener Dr. Pradeep Nemade, sir. I am not taking any revenge <coughs> by leaving. You came late. You <laughs> know. <laughs> I am sorry, please, and thank you. Don't take revenge. I have an engagement. Actually, you are the most sort of the person, sir. <laughs> you have all the answers. Yes, yes, the most welcome. Anytime. So may I invite Dr. Pradeep Nemade, sir, who is co-convener with me. Uh, may I invite uh, Makaran, Dr. Makaran Parodekar and Dr. Vaijanath Rahate, chairpersons of the session. And may I invite my faculty team, Dr. Nitin Kimmatkar from Nagpur, Dr. Vivek Trika, sir, from Ames, Delhi, and Dr. D.P. Bhushan, sir. Hey, sir, yeah. and Dr. D.P. Bhushan, from Dhanbad, Jharkhand. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I'll start. So this session, I am, uh, will try to cover the modalities of fixation in a mid-shaft clavicle fracture, overlook the distal in clavicle fracture and AC joint injuries, current concepts of management of glenoid fractures and necessity of fixation in extra-articular scapular fractures. So I'll be talking about the fixation techniques in mid-shaft clavicular fracture. So my talk will consist of indications of mid-shaft clavicular fracture fixation, various techniques of fixations, biomechanical principles of the available implants. Uh, advantages and disadvantages of the techniques and tips and tricks of surgical steps. So as we know, uh, clavicle is not a straight bone, it is a S-shaped bone with a medial one-third is quadrangular, uh, uh, middle one-third is tubular and lateral one-third which articulates with the acromion is a flat end. So the muscle which is attached uh, on the medial side is a sternocleidomastoid, pectoralis major, on the lateral side it was it is trapezius and deltoid. These are the main muscles which are responsible for the deforming forces. So let's say one case of 25 year old man, uh, old man motor, uh, having a motorcycle accident thrown from a motorcycle uh, having a left sided clavicular fractures. So what we do non-operative or open reduction. A similar case of 73 year old woman who had a just trivial fall having a right sided clavicular fracture. So what is traditional, te uh, traditional teaching is outcomes generally good, most of the clavicle uh, generally unite without any, any, med uh, any treatment, they do uh, very well with the non-operative management, non-union rate is hardly less than 1%, all clavicular fractures heal, malunions are uh, does generally doesn't require treatment, they don't have a complaints, function is normal even we are following a clavicular malunion. Uh, you will create a cosmetically scar if you operate the clavicles and with the surgery you probably uh, tread a bump from a scar, for a scar means either you prefer a scar or prefer a bump so i am talking about a mid clavicle fracture which is classified as a uh, clavicle fracture is in the medial segment distal segment and the mid shaft fracture the mid shaft shaft fractures are almost 80% of the fractures so why there is a necessary to fix this fracture? In, uh, in 2006, from, uh, recently from 2006, the literature is supporting the fixation of clavicular fractures. So the Mackey group uh, compared the, uh, uh, followed the non-operative treatment of fractures and they, they, dis they showed that the shoulder strength and endurance is reduced in, if the patient is uh, managed non-operatively. 
uh, in, in Canadian Orthopedic Trauma Society, uh, they have uh, in 2008 published paper which shows the better earlier functional outcome with a fixation techniques rather than a non-operative technique. Uh, the constant score, shoulder score and the dash score improve significantly after the plate fixations. Uh, uh, in 2012 also, in uh, JBGS also, the, the operative, uh, uh, operative treatment of mid-shaft clavicular fractures has less non-union and malunion as compared to the non-operative treatment. So, uh, so there is like from 2006, there is a consensus that you should operate clavicular fractures rather than just leave the patient with a significant malunion or a non-union. So how you evaluate the uh, clavicle, uh, standard AP and uh, 30 degrees cranial tilt uh, view can give you a better uh, orientation of the fractures. Uh, it is better advised to take a, both the clavicles in a single film, so you can see the displacements. So what is displacement is about? Because the because of muscle forces, the distal fragment generally goes uh, generally uh, sags down due to gravity. It goes anteriorly, inferiorly, and it translates medially. So there is a sh shortening which occurs in the clavicle, and which is significant if it is more than two centimeters. If it is less than five millimeter of shortening, it is very well accepted functionally. But if it is more than two centimeter shortening, uh, can result in shoulder stosis, and patient might have complaints of uh, uh, shoulder. Uh, dyskinesia and other uh, other functional limitations. So the tradical, traditional indications of surgery, these are absolute indications, it is, it is like open fractures, impending open fractures, neurovascular compromises, the relative indications are polytrauma patients, floating shoulder injuries, but now the significant displacement is getting, uh, 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 means the, the one more indication is added, that is a significant displacement more than 2 cm, we should consider a operative fixations. So what are the modalities of fixation we, we generally uh, used and uh, see this, uh, saw the plates being used. These are pre-contoured plates which can be uh, addressed, which can be uh, 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 attached anteriorly, superiorly and even the dual plating systems have been described. So what are the adv advantages of plate? It gives a rigid stabilization, neutralizes the bending and torsional forces. The anatomical reduction uh, is possible without any shortening. Less chances of implant breakage, uh, breakage or perforation or migrations and can use, uh, uh, can use for acute fracture as well as malunion, non-union cases. So let's say a case of a uh, young male with a right-sided uh, uh, mid-shaft clavicle fracture with a significant shortening with an impending skin, uh, impending uh, uh, fracture. So if, if you open, you can see the fascia which is torn. Uh, you have to plate it, uh, like we have plated it and uh, superiorly uh, with a, uh, taking care of the supraclavicular nerves. Generally, supraclavicular nerve you try to save as much as possible because in females, mostly they have like numbness over the nipple area, which is very uh, problematic for the females. So this is post-op x-ray. So uh, now, nowadays uh, the incisions which is described uh, because this is, is this time this is a horizontal incision over the clavicle. Nowadays uh, the described incision is a little vertical because you try to save as much clavic supraclavicular clavicular nerves uh, if possible. So what are the disadvantages of the plating? You have a long hypertrophy, uh, long scars which can hypertrophy, more soft tissue, uh, uh, soft tissue dissection, more chances of infection. Uh, neuro chances of neurovascular damage because the major vessels uh, run around run below the clavicle so there is a main issue of a hardware prominences and second surgery is required for a implant removal so the various constructs which are tested because because of the neurovascular damage which which, which is uh, main main issues with the plating so bicortical bicortical initially we try to use a bicortical uh, fixations now it is like uh, we have changed it to the unicortical lock screws or hybrid fixation where you use some lo locking screws which is unicortical and the last screws which is, which is uh, oblique screws which engages both the bone and gives a good fixation and neutralizes the uh, torsion forces also but the unicortical should be uh, deep enough to get the second cortex purchase, should not perforate the second cortex. So this is like construct which is described in from the Australian, Australian journals, the unicortical hybrid fixation uh, where we use an oblique screws distally. So uh, recently in JBJS also in 2020 they have uh, uh, included dual plating which is 2.4 plates anteriorly and 2.7 millimeters plates superiorly which can cause a lesser hardware and uh, significantly lower rate of re-operations. So the elastic snails which is described which is minimally invasive 
minimal scar and soft tissue disruption, relative stability can give a abundant callus, but the chances of migration and perforations are very high in a elastic snail. This is traditionally being used for a clavicle fractures. So there are various techniques which are described now. Uh, uh, this is in 2009, uh, which uh, they have uh, uh, included 6.5 millimeter screws across the fracture site from the medial to lateral end. Uh, this is one more uh, the study shows the use of Herbert screws across the fracture site. In they have published in results in 114 patients, uh, which is very safe and uh, effective management of the midshaft clavicular fracture. But both these techniques, they probably have opened the fracture site, reduced it, and put the screws. So one more study from India, uh, we have uh, screw nail techniques, uh, which, which, uh, which is published by Vasudev Gadegani sir. And they have published in results in 36 patients with the good outcomes. Dr. Pawa, yeah. please. Yeah. So the take home message, uh, the displaced clavicle fracture can cause significant malunion or nonunion. Uh, open reduction with 3.5 pre contoured anatomical plate on superior face is standard choice of surgery with good functional outcome. Beware of neurovascular damage while plating or use unicortical locking screws or hybrid, hybrid construct. Intramedial implants are also safe, effective tools of fixation. Thank you. So may I, may I invite uh, Dr. Nitin Kimmatkar sir for the next talk. Thank you. It is so painful. This is what I want to bring to your attention. Second attention is you remove the plate, you get a secondary fracture. Second, yes. In all, all, all. don't remove the plate. Correct? Yes. Yeah. So the ideal is gadegone nail. Gadegone nail. Gadegone nail, again hypertrophic down union over the clavicle. And I tell you, the commissioner of police in USA died of clavicular fracture, plating and nailing. Please don't take this clavicular Please. fracture. Aid. They perforated the artery and the commissioner died. Please take it from Google, his name. Third point is my innovative technique. I passed the same nail through the small nick vertical incision. No nerve is damaged. Right? And pass it and take it throughout the acromial side, wherever it comes. And then thread it, and the scar is posterior. This is the innovative technique. Please give a thought to that, and you have to screw it. So removal is also very easy. And literature says union rate and non-union rate of clavicle and nailing is same. This is my innovative technique. I have the video, and he is the author, and he, she is the author. She is, so you can touch anybody's nipple, no problem. Thank you, Dr. Mukhe, for your valuable input. Thank you. So, good morning, friends. Uh, continuing with the clavicular fractures, uh, we are entering to the zone of lateral end clavicle as well as AC joint. Okay, if you if you see this diagram carefully, basically it is a lateral scapular suspension system. Whatever we are studying, so it has been uh, this scapula has been suspended by various types of muscles as well as ligaments as well as joint capsules, as well as fascias from the surrounding structures. So what are the structures which give stability to the shoulder girdles? These are uh, small bones like clavicle, acromium, as well as uh, various ligaments which are covering these joints. And various muscles like subclavius muscle, pec major, deltoid, trapezius, and the fascia covering these muscles. So these are very important structures which give stability to the uh, shoulder joint. If you study the force vector, which is related to the scapular direction, you can see that there are various types of forces which are there, which are causing these injuries. First is compression injuries like this. These are the lesions of fragile tissue. Then comes the shearing forces, which came from the back. And this affects the lesions for stability as well as suspension. And some lesions from the posterior aspect can cause lesions of suspension. Here, this is a great force is there. Scapulothoracic uh, dissociation can occur with this type of great forces. 
so if you study also the spectrum of uh, injury as well as uh, energy dissipated or this uh, region you can get various types of uh, lesions at the ac joint as well as fracture clavicles so we'll study uh, some cases about this thing 24 year old man injury to the left side failed during the soccer game he has a close injury no neuroscular lesion and no associated lesion this was the x ray at the presentation so how do you proceed for this case whether to conserve what should be an approach uh, or if we fix it what are the type of implant and what are the key points of the fixation so this was done at some health facility and predictably at uh, first uh, post operative month it started failing out so what are the issues in these lateral clavicular fractures it is basically there is a subtle combination there is always a compromise of an coracoclavicular ligaments you you are not seeing on the x ray what are the soft tissues which are disrupted on the x rays these are always an unstable injuries and it has a short articular segment so there are various options for this fixation of this uh, uh, lateral and clavicle there are superior lateral anatomical plates from various companies there could be hook plate some could do a tension band wearing other could use sutures as well as button who are arthroscopic surgeons and there could be other modalities also so this is an implant hook plate it has to be used very judiciously in such fractures this hook should be uh, uh, placed over the posterior aspect of the ac acromion with a safe portal and you should see that uh, the various types of there are hook lanes are also this was done with that patient and at the one year after the plate removal this was the condition of the patient getting a successful outcome as an healing we will study another gentleman 61 year old man simple mechanical fall had a closed injury he has a moderate pain and he has a moderate skin bruising he is fit and well otherwise this were his x rays at presentation on the close up of this x ray so is this a stable or unstable injury obviously it is an unstable injury and it needs a surgical treatment we can see that there is a clavicular flake is there which is having an attachment with the coracoclavicular ligament so this has to be taken care of so if we classify this lesion this is a type 5 lesion and this was done so this uh, fracture was fixed with the uh, older generation uh, hook plate now the newer generation hook plates is there there is a inclination angle has been improved and there are it comes with the various types of hook depths also and it comes in 2.7 mm screw fixations so this patient was followed up and this implant started to give up so what are the potential problem with the hook plate there could be stress fracture there could be an impingement syndrome there could be a hook dislocation sometimes you can get a rotator cuff tear and acromion destruction can be there so it has to be placed very judiciously and used very judiciously and this certainly needs removal so that hook plate which was placed on that patient started giving up and it gave away so take home message for the lateral clavicular fractures sir these are very unstable fractures usually there is a compromise of coracoclavicular ligament this treatment option includes the fixation of the fracture and treatment of clavicular displacement 30 to 40% of non operatively treated fractures fails to unite it has a limited distal fixation hook plate improves the stability in this region and you can get an union rate of about 90 to 100% but it has its own complication and it needs removal coming to ac joint this is a 28 year old male patient fell on his left shoulder 3 days ago he has a pain and mass in upper part of his region painful ac joint is there if you see on x ray you should you use an x ray of both shoulders we can see that there is an increase ac joint distance and there is ac joint dislocation is there sometimes you can use a zenka views it could be classified according to the rockwood classification but it does not incorporate as well as uh, anteroposterior as well as rotational stability so further it could be uh, investigated with the help of shock test which will uh, show the uh, sometimes increased displacement in ac joint and this patient was operated on uh, arthroscopically with the cc ligament repair this was his post op x-ray and this is post from uh, four month post operative this is another patient 20 year old male was on joyride on two wheelers he suffered an accident there was an obvious ac joint disruption on the left side this was fixed with an hook plate so this were his follow up radiographs and this were his movement so take home messages 
AC joint injuries are part of the spectrum of uh, this lateral scapular suspension system injuries. You should understand and deal with the lesion. You should see that what so sort of structures has been disrupted and you should take care of that. Should fix CC as well as AC joint to have a stable construct. Suturing of AC joint ligaments and soft tissues is very important. You should also look after the trapezius fascia which also gives the stability. If it is acutely repaired then you, should, uh, you would not require any graph for the repair of AC joint. Thank you. So, discussing about the glenoid fractures, uh, we have Dr. Avivek Trika, the professor in Ames, Delhi. Okay, so we'll start with the glenoid injuries and I think it's only five minutes or so. So, we'll just go to the glenoid needs fixation. That's number one in this slide. If you look at the meta-analysis done for all the scapular fractures, the only fractures which require surgery majority of times are these having a shoulder suspensory complex problems, glenoid injuries, as well as glenoid neck with associated with extraarticular. That's the only injuries. These are the two major injuries which we operate. This is the classification which is purely anatomical, high anterior, posterior, inferior type of fractures which can be decided in the glenoid based on its oval shape. And you can see most of the fractures are usually inferior because your triceps originates from there. So whenever there is an avulsion, the glenoid breaks and the inferior part comes out. So they are the most common fractures which you see in glenoid. When do we operate on glenoid? That's the first thing because never we were operating on glenoid maybe 10, 15 years. I remember the first one I operated around 13 years back. Everyone in roundabout were taking the photographs wherever he went for some other injuries. This is a scapular fracture or a glenoid fracture why it has been operated. Articular step off of more than 5 millimeters. Why is it so? Because the actual cartilage thickness is around 4 millimeters. So just like tibial condyles, if your articular incongruity is less than 2 to 3, it does not matter much. So you can get away because glenoid is a simple part. It's actually the labrum and the capsule which are more articulation is active. So 5 millimeters is the range. More than 25%. Why? Because again the subluxation is will happen. You have the bony bank cards which can have with 10%, 5% where people are doing arthroscopically. So they are associated with ligamentous. But if it is more than 25%, then you do it because it is bound to subluxate. Subluxation and instability, as I said, and a young person who has a shoulder or a throwing activities or so, there you will be requiring the fracture fixations. For the anterior glenoids, which are opened up or fractured, you would treat them with deltopectoral. The same way as you do by bony bank cards or letter J procedure. Letargia is the same as being done, doing it from the anterior side. You take out a piece of coracoid or you fix the glenoid back. It's the same thing, putting in with two screws. Actually, the most common ones are the posterior approaches. And there we have the extensile, muscle sparing, and a minimally invasive lateral incision type fractures. So I'll just give you some examples. Anterior fracture, like a bony bank cart, you can fix it the same way as you do for any bony bank carts. And Arthroscopically, I am a trauma person, not so efficient in arthroscopic fixations. So we open up, it's faster for us and fix that with screws. Superior fractures also, you can also do arthroscopically from Nevesier portal, but I did it through a deltopectoral, opened up the glenoid, you can see that fracture. In spite of that much displacement, you see not much displacement is seen inside when you really look at the glenoid. And then you can fix that with the screws from the top and putting them in the, this is the fixation and then you can fix it with Herbert screws or the CC screws for the entire part through the same approach. Coming to the complex injuries of glenoid, which are these fractures. X-ray does not show you much, you see the CT scan. How the inferior, the entire glenoid has subluxed down because of the avulsion of the triceps with the bony avulsion of that. And these are the ones which require, if you don't operate, the shoulder is not going to move. Even the scapular thoracic is not going to happen because the movements is not going to be there at all. So we'll need to look and understand the anatomy from the posterior side. This is the anatomy, I'll take 30 seconds for this. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor, teres major. All the surgeries for glenoid are based on this interval. Teres minor and teres major, you go in between that, right? So the circumflex is there and then you go between the infraspinatus and teres minor, sorry. 
the circumflex, the axillary nerve, the quadrangular and the triangular spaces are coming lateral to the triceps, which is there, lateral to the triceps. So we are not to worry much about the vessels which were there. We are working basically in this plane, infra and teres. And that's how we see the lateral border and the glenoid going up to here. What we need to be careful if we are operating glenoid? This is the area from where the suprascapular notch, the suprascapular nerve and the vessels are coming, which is innervating the entire infraspinatus. So you need to be cautious because if you cut that nerve, the winging of scapula is going to happen, your surgery is failure. The second thing is a circumflex lateral branch which comes here ascending, which can be ligated if you want, if it is hampering your lateral structures and your fixation. This area, triangular area is the serious one where the glenoid neck is there, which you need to be careful because the nerve and the vessels are here. This is the nerve and the vessel of the suprascapular and the circumflex which you need to protect. These are the areas where you can put in the plates and screws. Oops. So I'll just go ahead. It's five minutes. So this is the fracture which I showed you. This is through a muscle sparing approach between the infraspinatus and teres and the lateral plate has been fixed, fixing the glenoid. You can see the glenoid cavity in this plane and that's how that fixation and the glenoid has been brought back to its position. Simple plate, 2.5, 3.5 small plates. This is the extensile approach. You can see the suture still here and the, because of muscle sparing approach like direct anterior, the patient is having full range right in the beginning with 10 to 14 days. Another fracture, the displacements of the glenoid which you can see. Here we have taken a vertical approach purely based on the same muscle incisions but inside with a simple small incision and a plate and screw has been put and you can see the lady with the vertical incision and the movements. These are the post-op and the pre-op CT scans. You can see the displacement, how it has been brought back. You can see the displacement of glenoid, how it has been brought back. I'll just take 30 seconds, sir, and finish my cases. This is another fracture of glenoid. Vertical incision, same, in lateral or prone position. Go between infra and teres. You see the lateral border and the inferior part of glenoid. Simple traumatic sir, you put in two lag screws and a neutralization plate on the lateral border. And that's what has been done here. You can see two lag screws and a small 3.5 or a locking 2.5 plates which are there. We can put them from the foot set or the metacarpal sets. Two lag screws and a plate. Another case, similar glenoid, same plates with two lag screws and a plate. And that's how here we have put the clavicle also. So finally, remember it's rare. Not so common, but if it is more than displaced, five millimeters, you need to fix that. Imaging, CT scan is a must. You cannot see it on an X-ray. Operated only, as I said, when major displacements are there. Posterior approach, lateral border, interval between teres minor and infraspinatus, going into the glenoid is the one which you operate on. Thank you. So may I invite Dr. D.P. Bhushan, he is a professor in Nanbad uh, Medical College, he is a head of department over there. He will be talking about the extra glenoid fractures of the scapula. Uh, 1998, patient incidentally came to me, so I do not have the pre-op x-rays. The radiological assessment as told by my previous speakers is done by many things, but for us, Grashi, axillary and bilateral view becomes important along with the CT scan. There had been many classifications starting from Ada and Miller and Eidelberg and many things, but ultimately it is the CT based classification for treatment which is more important. This is spinal pillar fractures by Batonisek. Then this is a spinal pillar fracture with, can I have it? Here it's fracture and here total of the spine is avulsed. This is three part fracture of the lateral margin and there are three types, but all of them has a fourth intercalary fragment as you can see here. And this is a comminuted fracture. So there are main four parts intercalary fragment. And finally, the Bartonisek has talked about two pillars, 
those pillars have been shown by Dr. Trikha, therefore I am skipping it, the fracture of the spine and the fracture of the lateral border. Complication of conservative treatment is around 40% and they are due to malunion, chronic pain, weakness, fatigability, loss of motion, mainly abduction and internal rotation and disability that is shoulder ptosis and deformity if there is a posterior angulation of the body. And Norquist has found in 1992 that 20 out of 48 cases on 14 years follow up had been problem. Snapping a scapula, a scapulothoracic crepitus, an impingement of supraspinatus by malunited acromion, which is cone type 3. Then if the carcoid is displaced, the thoracic outlet obstruction. A scapulothoracic dissociation and dyskinesia, if the position of these bones, especially the appendages, are not there. We look at the following things. The glenopolar angle, draw a line here, draw a line here. It can change, obviously, if you are rotating the scapula. So it should be in plumb AP view. The angulation of the body, again, it is to be in plumb lateral view. It should not be more than 45 degrees to treat conservatively. And the lateral border offset, see, this point has fractured from this point. So it has displaced. The scapula, especially the glenoid, is pulled medially. So the medialization of glenoid leads to all these problems. And Goss, you have already seen it. Surgical indications for the body. Glenopolar angle less than 20 degrees. More than 22 millimeters of medialization, lateral border offset of the glenoid. 100% translation in the lateral view if there is no contact. 45 degree tilt of the body in the lateral view, but since it keeps on increasing, it should be measured at weekly interval till three weeks. If till three weeks it has not gone more than 45 degrees, you can rest with the com comfortable and associated SSSC injuries with either double dis disruption, triple disruption or more, but it should be more than one centimeter to get it operated. Indications of appendages, if the coracoid is fractured beyond the CC ligament, then the conjoint tendon pulls it if it is more than one centimeter displaced or the base of coracoid, especially since it is an atavistic cartilage, atavistic epiphysis, in children it gets disrupted, in adult also. Acromion, when the fracture of acromion is being pulled by deltoid and it is impinging upon the supraspinatus, and the glenoid, you have already talked about it. These structures, we already know, because for body, there is no anterior approach. It is only posterior approach. The standard is jude, when you erase all the muscles, then modified jude, we take a fasciocutaneous flap and enter in the interval. Then there are mirror jude, and this is known as a reverse jude or the saber cut. Nowadays, we prefer to go by these two incisions because we can do it. See, here you see the deltoid. Deltoid is not to be removed or cut if possible. And if you keep the hand 90 degrees, you can spare it. Surgical technique, it should be starting from the medial side if it is through and through fracture. These are the plates available in India. So this fracture, you see the result, the way it was fixed. Of course, there was clavicle along with it. Here also, there was a clavicle along with it. This case, as you can see in the CT, there is a coracoid fracture. So the coracoid was also fixed. Rest you see, you know. Even simple reconstruction plate can you steer you away. So complications, Hardegger found that 33 surgical patients, 64% returned with normal. Similar results were with Jones, but though received surgery, there was a great bias outcome. 
The surgical treatment of extraarticular scapular fracture remains controversial due to acceptable result of non-operative treatment and the lack of high quality evidence comparing operative to non-operative treatment. However, not all extraarticular fractures can uniformly be treated non-operatively with reproducibly excellent clinical outcomes. So conclusion, should we be fixing it? Yes, but more importantly, we should be diagnosing more of these by CT scan, by understanding the anatomy, by understanding the CC ligament positions and appendages and presenting our patients with all their treatment options, surgical and non-surgical. Thank you. So, when we are talking of a scapula, it's a rare thing. There had been some brainstorming sessions. Just, just, I'll go through. In 2011, there was Seattle Scapula Summit, floating shoulder by Meng in 20. Then Benha Online, 30 minutes they had in 20. Now, the Brazilian Indo webinar has again for three hours discussed about the scapula. AO North America, one hour 30 minutes in Washington in 15th February 21. The 15th September 21, and just down the line, after six months, they had another webinar, AO North America, again for one hour. So, scapula is evolving. There had been, in the last October, two days uh, seminar with cadaveric studies in America. So, we should also be fixing it more, just like other things. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> Just one question to Dr. Trika. Uh, we spoke about uh, the displacement as in step, but more of, more of this uh, glenoid fracture, there is no step but rather angulation. And uh, there is no um, literature available as to what angulation is acceptable or not. Because as the entire scap, uh, the glenoid takes part in the formation of humeral head, so any angulation is going to decrease the surface contact area. So what's your opinion on that? In very early mobilization is done for me, from my side. What I do is for them, the displacement is not there, but the angulation, as you are saying. So, because if the labrum is intact, the displacements are not there, I start them on as early manipulation. I have sometimes taken them under GA and manipulated them so that the shoulder, the template of the head, kind of, kind of yeah. So, it makes the angulation come back because of the muscles and I start them on very early mobilization which is within the first week I start them. So that even if I don't want, because then I am trying to balance between a surgical insult and a conservative angulation which is going to cause it. So I try to mobilize them early so that the muscle action takes over and it is able to bring it back if possible. That's the thing. I, I, I do not use the hook plates for all my AC or any lateral and clavicles. I try to make them anatomical or take a ethibond or a suture and try to reconstruct the ligaments. I, I, I think also. same opinion. Unless, I have also stopped unless you are lateral and clavicle is so weak that it will not hold the, the end button or kind of the uh, intercalage wire, then I think, I think that would no, be the... Why have you moved away from because of it the acromial problems, because of the... It is a suboptimal impact. Because no, no, because of the acromial it, problem. The not because it, uh. when you try to bend, the angulation, as he says in the previous one, which we used to have, is not appropriate for the clavicle to fix. So you need to bend the plate, actually, to get a proper fixation. It's too much force against force. the... Angle. Force against yes. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it will have a stress fracture, yeah. or if you do not remove... And it, besides, there is, there is another important thing. If the patient forgets to come, he will be in real trouble. For removal, removal is a must. And sometimes patients forget. It is all about the hook, not about the plate. So all, all distal clavicular fracture are essentially a flexible kind of clavicular fixation. Previously it was based on acromia, now it is based on coracoi. But one issue is there, uh, whatever type of fixation we are doing, uh, anteroposterior laxity is there. So, whatever, whatever the uh, dynamic fixation we are doing, there is some instability is always there.
So only thing which will give you a study fixation will be a hook plate. And uh, last X-ray which I showed in scapula, it has AC subluxation because the coracoid was fractured. So I had to fix the coracoid and for fixing the coracoid, I did not show the slide, you should take an end on view. It has two things, horizontal process and vertical process and the vertical process is just like any long bone. It has a medullary cavity. They say it coracoid tunnel view. You make the tunnel, point it, go inside and a long screw of 50, 60 millimeter, as long as it can go by drilling, you put it, fix it and you are done with it. Uh, sir, I would like to announce now, um, we will have no other lectures in uh, any of the halls except Hall A. Uh, from now 10 o'clock until 12.40, we will be having the inauguration as well as the special lectures. So I would request everyone to please proceed to Hall A. Thanks.